Hi everyone! In this video we're going to solve another separable differential equation and it's dy dx equals y plus 1 over x. We learned that the approach to solving separable differential equation is to separate variables. Well, that's where the name comes from. In other words, we want to collect variables y on one side and variables x on the other side of the equation. Now, in this case, I'm going to start by multiplying both sides by dx, so that dx appears on the right-hand side. And at the same time, I will divide by y plus 1 on both sides, so that y appears on the left side, y plus 1 here. So let's see what we have now. On the left, it's going to be dy over y plus 1. And on the right hand side, I have dx and x is in the denominator. Just be careful to careful putting expressions in the right spot, numerator or denominator. Okay, and after that, once we separated variables, and we can see that we did, right? All y's are on the left, all x is on the right. We're ready to integrate both sides. So I'm gonna apply integral to each side. Now in this case, you know, integration is going to be very simple. Um, these are just going to be natural logarithms, right? So it's ln of absolute value of y plus 1. And um, as you know from the previous example, we don't really have to write plus c on both sides. It's enough to write plus c on one side since we can combine constants anyway. Equals ln of absolute value of x. Now plus c. 1. And what we have here is the family of functions, family because of this arbitrary constant, family of functions in the implicit form that represent solutions to this given equation. So we're pretty much done. See how quick and easy that was. Well, again, I'm going to write that this is a solution in the implicit form implicit solution and we already talked about how there is no need to obtain the explicit solution in other words to get y by itself unless it is important or convenient so technically i can just leave it like that and move on with my life uh, however sometimes when you're trying to check your answer with let's say the textbook where answer is written in the explicit form you want to take now, a few more steps, few more algebraic steps after that to try to put in the explicit form, again, just to check your answer. I'm going to show you those steps. Now, what we have here in this function, we have several occurrences of logarithm. So I have logarithm on the left-hand side and I have ln on the right-hand side. One convenient trick that you can use to get rid of logarithms, because, well, we have to in order to get hold of y, is to take that constant and rewrite it also in terms of logarithm, because any constant can be written as the logarithm of any base. I'll, I'll use ln, since all well, the rest of them are lns, of some other constant. So I'll say c2. Now think this way. Logarithm represents a power to which we have to raise base of this logarithm to get number inside it. In other words, again, I'm going to write it one more time. I can always think of constant, some constant c2, such that base e raised to the power c1 gives me c2. So e to the power c1 equals c2. And of course, it's all in general, right? Since, since c1 is arbitrary constant, well, c2 also arbitrary constant, but um, give me some specific value of c1, I can find you the appropriate c2. Okay, so that's how I'm going to rewrite my uh, function. ln of absolute value of y plus 1 equals ln of absolute value of x plus ln of um, c2. Here I don't have to use absolute value since it's a constant. And I know it's guaranteed to be positive because positive base raised to any power is always positive. Now, the reason I needed that is because now I have logarithms everywhere throughout my 
a function and that means that logarithms on the right hand side I can combine so ln of absolute value of y plus 1 equals ln of remember when we combine logarithms well when logarithms are added and we combine them what happens is that we have to multiply expressions standing inside of logarithm so it's going to be c2 times absolute value of x so that's all inside one logarithm and when we have logarithms with same basis on each side of the equation um, we can simply drop them so i can equate e expressions inside the logarithm so absolute value of y plus 1 equals c2 absolute value of x like that so that was the way or one of the ways to clear logarithms and we're getting closer to getting y by itself in other words finding the explicit form of the solution um, now i have to get rid of absolute values with that i have to be you know but careful just so that i write everything mathematically correct now when i have absolute values on both sides so technically the way i have to drop absolute values to say that y plus 1 equals positive or negative right hand side so plus or minus c2x like that you may remember this from algebra when you learn how to solve absolute val absolute value equations and finally what i'll do so i'll think about this plus or minus c2 as another arbitrary constant so i'll just relabel it so I'll call that, I could call it C3, or since I can see how I am ready to write my final answer here, I'll call it just C, so that my final answer looks a little bit cleaner. <clears throat> so I have y plus 1 equals Cx, and to get y by itself, well now it's super easy, I subtract 1 from each side, so that gives me y equals cx minus 1 and that is explicit solution or it's, it's explicit form of the solution um, that's because y is by itself as you can see explicit solution and implicit solution look very different and a lot of times it's even hard to really recognize that they are related but through some algebraic manipulations we can show that they are related and that's one of the ways to go from one to another and by the way explicit solution makes it a little bit easier especially in this case to check that solution if we decide to do so so remember solutions to differential equations are families of functions but the way we check them is the same as any other equation um, this family of functions should satisfy the given equation so if i take it and if i plug it in to the original equation which means that here i have to plug in the derivative of this family of functions right of this one so if I plug in derivative here, and if I plug in the function itself here instead of y, and I simplify everything, well, I'll see that the left-hand side equals to the right-hand side. So that will satisfy the equation, and that's the way to, you know, check that we found the right solution. So that, that, that part is done the same way as for any other kind of equation.